there was a certain man of Ramamathian Zophiel of Mount Ephraim, and his name was Elkanah, the son of Jeroham, and the son of Elihu, and the son of Tohu, and the son of Zeph, and Ephorite. And he had two wives. The name of the one was Hannah, and the other name was Peniah. And Peniah had children, but Hannah had no children. And this man went up to his city yearly to worship and to sacrifice unto the city of hosts in Shiloh. And the two sons of Eli, Hophni and Phinehas, the priests of the Lord, were there. And then the time of the Elkaniah offered, he gave to Peniah his wife, and to all her sons and all her daughters portions. But unto Hannah he gave a worthy portion, for he loved Hannah. But the Lord had shut up her womb. And her adversary also provoked her sore, for to make her fret, because the Lord had shut up her womb. And so he did this year by year. Then she went up to the house of the Lord, so she provoked her. Therefore she wept and did not eat. And then Elkanah, her husband, said to her, Hannah, why weepest thou, and why eatest thou not? And why is thy high grieved? Am I not better to thee than ten sons? So Hannah rose up after to eat in Shiloh, and after they had drunk. Now Eli the priest sat upon a seat by the post in the temple of the Lord. And she was in bitterness of soul, and prayed unto the Lord, and wept sore. And she vowed a vow, and she said, O Lord of hosts, if thou wilt indeed look on the affliction of my hand, handmaid and remember me and not forget thy handmaid but will give me thy handmaid a man child then I will give him unto the Lord all the days of his life and there shall be no razor that come upon his head and it came to pass as she continued praying before the Lord that Eli marked her mouth now Hannah she spoke in her heart only her lips moved but her voice was not heard Therefore Eli thought she had been drunken. And Eli had said unto her, How long wilt thee be drunken? Put away thou wine from thee. And Hannah answered and said, No, my lord, I am a woman of a sorrowful spirit. I have drunk neither wine nor strong drink, but have poured out my soul before the Lord. Count not thy handmaid for a daughter of Belial, but out of the abundance of my complaint and grief had I spoken hitherto. Then Eli answered and said, Go in peace, and the God of Israel grant thee thy petition that thou hast asked of him. And she said, Let thy handmaid find grace in thy sight. So the women went on her way and did eat, and her countenance was no more sad. And she rose up in the morning early and worshipped the Lord, and returned, and came to her house to Ramah. And Elkanah knew Hannah his wife, and the Lord remembered her. Wherefore it had come to pass, when the time has come, about after Hannah had conceived, she bore a son, and she named him Samuel, saying, because I had asked the Lord, the Lord, him of the Lord. And the male Elkanah and all his house went up to offer unto the Lord the yearly sacrifice in his battle. But Anna went not up, for she said to her husband, I will not go up until the child be weaned, and then I will bring him, that he may be appear before the Lord and there abide forever. And Elkanah, her husband, said unto her, Do what seemeth thee good. Tarry until you have weaned him, only the Lord establish his word. So the woman abode and gave her son suck until she weaned him. And then she had weaned him. She brought him up with her with three bullocks and one ephah of flour, a bottle of wine, and brought him into the house of the Lord of Shiloh. And the child was young. And she slew a bullock and brought it to the child to Eli. And she said, O my Lord, as thy soul liveth, my Lord, I am the woman, 
that stood by me here praying unto the Lord. For this child I prayed, and the Lord had given me my petition, which I have asked of him. Therefore, also I have lent him to the Lord. As long as he liveth, he shall be lent to the Lord. And he worshipped the Lord there. And Hannah prayed and said, My heart rejoiceth in the Lord. Mine horn is exalted in the Lord. My mouth is enlarged over mine enemies, because I rejoice in thy salvation. There is none holy as the Lord, for there is none beside thee. Neither is there any rock like our God. Talk no more so exceedingly proudly. Let no arrogancy come out of your mouth. For the Lord is a God of knowledge, and by him actions are weighed. The bows of the mighty men are broken, and they that stumbled are girded with strength. They that were full have hired out themselves for bread, and they that were hungry ceased. So that the barren hath borne seven, and she that hath many children is waxed feeble. The Lord killeth and maketh alive. He bringeth down to the grave and bringeth up. The Lord maketh poor and maketh rich. He bringeth low and lifteth up. He raiseth up the poor out of the dust and lifteth up the beggar from the dunghill to set them among princes and make them inherit the throne of glory. For the pillars of the earth are the Lord's, and he who hath set the world upon them. He will keep the feet of his saints, and the wicked shall be silent in darkness. For by strength shall no man prevail. The adversaries of the Lord shall be broken to pieces. Out of heaven shall he thunder upon them. The Lord shall judge the ends of the earth, and he shall give strength unto his king and exalt the horn of his anointed. And Elkanah went to Ramah to the house, and the child did minister unto the Lord before Eli the priest. This song of praise is strikingly similar to that of another faithful woman in the Bible. And Mary said, My soul doth magnify the Lord, and my spirit has rejoiced in God my Savior, for he hath regarded the lowest state of his handmaiden. For behold, from henceforth all generations shall call me blessed. And he that is mighty hath done great things, and holy is his name. And his mercy is on them that fear him from generation to generation. He has showed strength with his arm, and he has scattered the proud in the imaginations of their heart. He hath put down the mighty from their seats, and exalted them of low degree. He hath filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he hath sent empty away. He hath helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy, as he spoke to our fathers, to Abraham, and to his seed forever. Two women, two songs, each with their own story each with their faithful praise to the living God. Hannah, humbled and unable to give birth to a child, vowed to give her child to the Lord and was given a man-child of the Lord. Mary, never knew a man, was given the man-child Christ our Lord and King. Both Hannah and Mary called themselves the maidservant of the Lord. Hannah said, Let your maidservant find favor in your sight. Mary said, Behold, 
the maidservant of the Lord. Both sons were consecrated to God's service. Now the sons of Eli were blind. They did not know the Lord. And the priest's customs with the people was that when any man offered sacrifice, the priest's servants came while the flesh was in seething, and the flesh hook of three teeth in his hand. And he struck it in a pan, or a kettle, or cauldron, or pot. All that flesh hook brought up the priest took for himself. So they did in Shiloh unto all the Israelites that came thither. Also before they burnt the fat, the priest servant came and said to the man that sacrificed, Give flesh to the roast for the priest. For he did not have sodden flesh of thee, but raw. And if any man said unto him, Let them not fail to burn the fat presently, and then take as much as thy soul desireth, then he would answer him, Nay, but thou shalt give me now, now, and if not, I will take it by force. Wherefore the sin of the young men was very great before the Lord. The men abhorred the offering of the Lord. But Samuel ministered before the Lord, being a child, girded with a linen ephod. Before, moreover, <coughs> his mother made him a little coat and brought it to him year after year, when she came up with her husband to offer the yearly sacrifice. And Eli blessed Elkanah and his wife, and said, The Lord give thee seed of this woman for the loan which is lent to the Lord. And they went unto their own home. The Lord visited Hannah. <clears throat> so that she conceived, and she bare three sons and two daughters. And the child Samuel grew up before the Lord. Now Eli was very old, and heard all that his sons had done in Israel, and how they lay with the women that assembled at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. And he said unto them, Why do you do such things? For I hear of your evil dealings by all these people. Nay, my sons, for it is no good that I hear. Ye make the Lord's people to transgress. If one man sin against another, the judge shall judge him. But if a man sin against the Lord, who shall entreat for him? Notwithstanding, they hearkened not to the voice of their father, because the Lord would slay them. And the child Samuel grew on, and was in favor both with the Lord and with men. And there came a man of God unto Eli, and said unto them, Thus saith the Lord, Did I plainly appear unto the house of his father, when they were in Egypt, in Pharaoh's house? And did I choose him, not of all the tribes of Israel, to be my priest, to offer upon, upon my altar, to burn incense, to earn ephod before me? And did I give unto the house of thy father all the offerings made by fire, of the children of Israel? Wherefore kick ye at my sacrifice and my offering, which I have commanded in my habitation, and honorest thy sons above me, and make themselves fat with the chiefness of all the offering of Israel, my people. Therefore the Lord God of Israel saith, I was indeed that thy house, and the house of thy father, shall walk before me forever. But now the Lord saith, Be it far from me. For them that honor me I will honor, and they that despise me shall be lightly esteemed. Behold, the days came, and I came, and I will cut off thine arm, and the arm of thy father's house, and there shall be not an old man in thine house. And thou shalt see an enemy in the habitation, and all the wealth which God shall give Israel, and then shall be, shall be an old man in the house forever. And the man of thine, whom I shall not cut off from thy altar, shall be to consume thy eyes, and to grieve thine heart. And all the increase of thy house shall die in the flower of their age. And this shall be a sign unto thee, and shall come upon your two sons, Hophni and Phinehas, and one day they shall die, both of them.
and I will raise up faithful priests and do according to that which is in my heart and my mind, and I will build him a sure house, and he shall walk before me appointed forever. And it shall come to pass that every one that is left in thy house shall come and crouch in him for a piece of silver and a morsel of bread. And I will say to them, Put me, I pray thee, into one of the priest's office, and I may eat a piece of bread. And the child Samuel ministered unto the Lord before Eli. And the word of the Lord was precious in those days. There was no open vision. And it came to pass at that time <clears throat> when Eli was laid down in his place and his eyes began to wax dim <coughs> that he could not see. And ere the lamp of God went out in the temple of the Lord where the ark of God was and Samuel was laid down to sleep that the Lord called Samuel, and he answered, Here I am. And he ran to Eli and said, Here I am, for you callest me. And he said, I did not. Lie down again. And he went in to lay down. And the Lord called again to Samuel. And Samuel arose and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for thou didst call me. And he answered, I called not my son, lie down again. Now Samuel did not know the Lord, neither was the word of the Lord yet revealed unto him. And the Lord called Samuel again the third time, and he arose and went to Eli, and he said, Here I am, for thou didst call me. And Eli perceived that the Lord had called the child. Therefore Eli said to Samuel, Go lie down, and if it be, if he call thee, that you shall say, Speak, for thy servant heareth. So Samuel went down and lay in his place. And the Lord called and stood. The Lord came and stood and called as at other times. Samuel, Samuel, then Samuel answered, Speak, for thy servant heareth. And the Lord said to Samuel, Behold, I will do a thing in Israel, at which both the ears of everyone that heareth it shall tingle. And that day I will perform against Eli all things which I have spoken concerning his house. And when I begin, I will also make an end. For I have told him that I will judge his house forever for the iniquity which he knows, because his sons made themselves vile, and he restrained them not. And therefore I have sworn unto the house of Eli, that the, that the iniquity of Eli's house shall not be purged with sacrifice, nor offering forever. And Samuel lay into the morning, and opened the doors of the house of the Lord. And Samuel feared to show Eli the vision. Then Eli came, called Samuel and said, Samuel, my son, and he answered, Here I am. And he said, What is the thing that the Lord hath said to thee? I pray thee, and hide not from me. God do so to thee, and more also. If thou hide anything from me of all these things, and he had said to thee, and Samuel told him every whip, and hid nothing from him. And he said, It is the Lord, let him do what seems him good. And Samuel grew, and the Lord was with him, and did let none of his words fall to the ground. And all Israel from Dan, even to Beersheba, knew that Samuel was established to be a prophet of the Lord. And the Lord appeared again in Shiloh, and the Lord revealed himself to Samuel in Shiloh by the word of the Lord. And the word of Samuel came to all Israel. Now Israel went out against the Philistines to battle and pitched against Ebenezer. And the Philistines pitched in Aphek. And the Philistines took them 
themselves in array against Israel. And when they joined battle, Israel was smitten before the Philistines. And they slew of the army in the field about 4,000 men. And when the people were come to the camp, the elders of Israel said, Therefore hath the Lord smitten us today before the Philistines. Let us fetch the ark of the covenant of the Lord out of Shiloh unto us, that when it cometh along us, it may save us out of the hand of our enemies. So the people sent to Shiloh that they might bring from thence the ark of the covenant of the Lord of hosts, which dwelleth between the cherubims. And the two sons of Eli, Hophni and Phinehas, were there with the ark of the covenant of God. And when the ark of the covenant of the Lord came into the camp, all Israel shouted with a great shout, so that the earth rang again. And when the Philistines heard the noise of that shout, they said, What meaneth the noise of that great shout in the camp of the Hebrews? They understood that the ark of the covenant was came into the camp. And the Philistines were afraid, for they said, God is come into the camp. And they said, Woe unto us, for there hath not been such a thing here before. Woe unto us, who shall serve us out of the hand of these mighty gods. These are the gods that smote the Egyptians with all the plagues in the wilderness. Be strong and quit yourselves like men, O ye Philistines, that ye be not the servants of the Hebrews, as that they might be for you. Quit yourselves like men and fight. And the Philistines fought in Israel smith, and they fled every man into the tent. And there was a great slaughter, for there fell of thirty thousand footmen. And the ark of the covenant was taken, and the two sons of Eli, Hophni and Phinehas, were slain. And there a man of Benjamin, out of the army, and came to Shiloh the very next day with his clothes rent, and the earth upon his head. And when he came, lo, Eli sat upon a seat of the wayside watching, for his heart trembled for the ark of God. And when the man came into the city and told it, all the city cried out. And when Eli heard the noise of the crying, he said, What be that the noise of this tumult? And the men came in hastily and told Eli. Now Eli was ninety and eight years old, and his eyes were dim, that he could not see. And the man said unto Eli, I am he that came out of the army, and I fled today out of the army. And he said, What is it there done, my son? And the messenger answered and said, Israel is fled before the Philistines. And there had also been a great slaughter among the people, and thy two sons also, Hophni and Phinehas, are dead, and the ark of the covenant is taken. And it came to pass, when he made mention of the ark of God, that he fell back to the seat backward by the side of the gate, and his neck broke, and he died. And for he was an old man and heavy, and he had judged Israel forty years. And in his daughter-in-law, Phineas' wife, was with child, near to be delivered. And when she heard the tidings that the ark has taken, and that her father-in-law and her husband were dead, she bowed herself and travailed, for her pains came upon her. And about the time of her death, the women that stood by her said unto her, Fear not, for thou hast borne a son. But she answered not, neither did she regard it. And she named the child Ichabod, saying, The glory is departed from Israel, because the ark of God was taken. <laughs> and because of her father-in-law and her husband. And she said, The glory is departed from Israel, for the ark of God is taken. Eli knew the extent of the wickedness of his sons, even in the very house of God. His sons had made themselves very vile in the presence of the Lord. Eli's counsel with his sons did not show intent to restraint, 
nor any righteous anger. Neither was there any regret or repentance from his sons for their evil deeds. Thus, the righteous judgment of God fell upon the house of Eli and the nation.